managerial accounting, absorption costing versus variable costing. Now recall from our data video that our single product company sells its product for $200 per unit and it incurs these manufacturing costs in making that product. Uh, direct materials of 41, direct labor of $4 per unit, variable overhead of $5 per unit, and fixed overhead $450,000 per month. I also recall from our data scenario that in scenario A, we produced 9,000 units and also sold 9,000 units during the period. Now, the units produced is the number that we're going to focus on because in order to calculate product cost per unit, we need to calculate the fixed overhead on a per unit produced basis. So in calculating our full product cost per unit under absorption costing, we start with the variable elements, the direct materials of $41, the direct labor of $4 per unit and the variable overhead of $5 per unit, but we're going to need to calculate the fixed overhead per unit. So this is going to be for scenario A because we'll see in a few minutes that in scenario B our product cost for fixed overhead is going to be different. So we've done this before. Uh, we take the total fixed overhead for the period which is 450000 and we divide that by the number of units that were produced in this period. So that would be 9000 and that's going to give us $50 per unit. So in a scenario A under absorption costing our full product cost is a total of the variable cost of $50, 41, 4, and 5, plus in this scenario $50 per unit for fixed overhead for a total of $100 per unit. Now one word of caution before we go on to calculating cost of goods sold. This um, illustration violates some of the principles that we learned for calculating predetermined overhead in earlier videos. We said that in calculating predetermined overhead rates, we should use at minimum a one year level of production and of cost in order to smooth out seasonal fluctuations. And here we're calculating fixed overhead per month. Uh, that's just to simplify the data and help to illustrate the difference between absorption and variable costing. We should still follow the same principles for calculating predetermined overhead that we learned in earlier videos. Now, let's go on to the next step. We've got our full product cost per unit under absorption of $100. Now, let's take a look at how we calculate cost of goods sold under scenario A. Well, our starting point in calculating cost of goods sold is our beginning finished goods inventory. Now, recall that in scenario A, there were 500 units in finished goods inventory. But at what cost should we assign those? Well, again, for simplicity's sake, Let's assume that last period's production and cost were the same as this period's. So those 500 units would be costed at the same $100 per unit as we just calculated for this period. So beginning inventory, 500 units times $100 per unit, that's going to be a cost of $50,000 in scenario A. Then we add in the cost of the units produced, which of course, recall from earlier videos, is cost of goods manufactured. And that cost, we can simply calculate it by multiplying the number of units produced times that per unit cost. 
So 9,000 times that same $100 per unit. Of course, that 100, recall, is made up of the direct materials at $41 for each of those 9,000 units, the direct labor at $4 times 9,000, the variable overhead at $5 per unit times 9,000, plus the total of 450,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead. So that cost of goods manufactured could be calculated by adding all of those product costs and should get the same amount that we're going to get here. So 9,000 times $100 is a total of 900,000. And beginning inventory plus cost of goods manufactured minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. So that's the next thing we need to do. Calculate finished goods ending inventory. And recall from our data, we started out with 500 units, we produced 9,000 units, and sold 9,000, so we have 500 in ending inventory also. So 500 units times $100, that's that same $50,000 that we started with. So cost of goods sold, $50,000 plus $900,000 minus $50,000 is $900,000. So we could have simply multiplied the 9,000 units we sold times that $100. But I need for us to see what happened or what changed or did not change in this case between beginning finished goods inventory and ending finished goods inventory. We started out with 500 units and we wound up with 500 units. And in this particular simple scenario, those 500 units at beginning and at ending had the same per unit cost. So there was no change in the inventory level from beginning to end of period. So our cost of goods sold, 900000 Now, let's take a look at scenario B.